The DMV produces top-notch high school football talent, but will that talent play for the Terps, produce results in the Big Ten Eastern Division? That's the question. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, previewing college football 2020. And we begin our season previews in College Park, Maryland, with the Terps coming off a 3-9 campaign, 1-8 in the Big Ten. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Please subscribe if you love the game that we love and you want to get set for the 2020 season. Like the videos and share them on social media. And, of course, leave your record selection for Maryland football down in the comments section below and any kind of request that you have for us here at the Voice of College Football. All right, Maryland football got off to a tremendous start under Michael Loxley in 2019. 2-0 out of the gate, scoring a 79-0 win over Howard. Doesn't mean a whole lot. Then they played Syracuse, a top 15 team in the country, or so was thought at the time of the game. And, of course, they buried Syracuse with 63 points, and it all looked like the Terps might break loose in 2019. But then they fell flat. They lost to the rest of their games, except for one decent moment against even more hapless Rutgers. And Maryland, after scoring all those points the first two games, scored an average of 13 points per game the final 10 games of the season. All right, let's look at the talent on the roster. It's not bad. So Maryland has not played up to its potential in terms of the talent on the roster. DJ Durkin brought in some tremendous recruiting classes at Maryland. So consider that the, the players on the roster – the recruiting rankings that comprise that roster ranked 6th, 11th, 5th, and 4th in the Big Ten. Put it all together, and it should be about the 6th best team in the Big Ten. It's not anything close to that. The 6th best team in the Big Ten is basically Iowa, and Maryland is nothing close to the Hawkeyes right now. Number 31, 47, 28, and 18, those are the four classes that sit on the roster for Maryland currently. That's about a 25 to 30 rated recruiting class. They should be doing better than they've done. DJ Durkin off the field issues. He's gone, of course. Loxley took over last year, and it was a train wreck. All right, the quarterback position has been the microcosm of Maryland football fortunes in recent years. The quarterback position has been one of the worst in the Power Five due to a lot of injuries, inordinate injuries, compared to your typical stroke of luck. So I don't know what the strength and conditioning issues are there with Maryland football, but the quarterback position has been hit hard by injuries, but also just flat out not recruiting great quarterbacks, not developing them, and then you get the performance that they get, which means that they've not had a decent quarterback performance since Danny O'Brien back in 2010 with 22 touchdowns and eight picks, ironically, or not so much. That was the last time that Maryland football finished in the top 25 at the end of the season at 9-4 and four and number 23. Since then, since 2015, Maryland quarterbacks have thrown 73 touchdowns and 63 picks. Not a good ratio at all. It's basically seven touchdowns for every six interceptions. That can't happen. Josh Jackson was brought in from Virginia Tech where he led 10-9 and nine win seasons at Virginia Tech, actually got Hurt a couple games into the second season, but went 10 and 4 his first season in Blacksburg with 25 touchdowns and 10 picks total. But he was not that quarterback for Maryland. I don't know what happened to the kid because he's a big, strong kid, mobile, strong arm. He's always been scatter shot, not a dissector of defenses necessarily, but a kid that's been a capable collegiate quarterback but completing 47% of his passes last season. And again, after throwing seven touchdowns in the two easy wins to start the season, Jackson only threw five touchdowns against five picks the final 10 games. He has to get better. The transfer of Talia Tungabailoa was the big news of the Maryland offseason. Will he clear and be eligible in 2020? We don't know at this point. Tyrell Pigram has an experienced backup for Maryland. All right. At the running back position, Maryland's actually been outstanding in recent years with Anthony McFarland and Javon Leak, but they're both gone. Senior Tyon Fleet Davis comes in at 4.2 yards per carry, 265 yards rushing, 
not nearly the production that McFarland and Leak posted the the last couple seasons at six and a half to seven yards per carry. So they regress at running back considerably. They do have a couple of prized freshmen in a Penny Boone, this 26th rated back in the country out of Michigan, and also Oklahoma product, uh, the 35th ranked Isaiah Jacobs, a freshman, uh, comes in and they'll probably get some playing time. But again, a regression at running back. Three offensive linemen are back from a porous line. Uh, this team was 129th. There are 130 teams. Number 129 in third down conversion. That also goes to poor play calling. At wide receiver, they lose four to the transfer portal. They bring back uh, Dante Demas, 41 catches, six touchdowns. Brian Cobbs hauled in 16 receptions, so they're thin at wide receiver. But they've got Sean Savoy, who uh, posted some nice numbers as a freshman at Virginia Tech a few years ago with 39 catches, little utilized by the Hokies in recent years. Five-star Raheem Jarrett. He could definitely be a factor in this offense right out of the gate. Fourth-rated wide receiver in the country out of D.C. Co-offensive coordinators. We'll see if that works for Maryland with a couple of experienced guys. Joker Phillips, who was once the Kentucky head coach, and also you got Scotty Montgomery, uh, most famously the head coach at Tulsa. They're going to share the duties again. I don't know how that's going to work, but they have less talent to work with in 2019 with four less uh, prominent wide receivers, and of course McFarland and Leak gone at running back, and uh, the replacements aren't as good to date. The defense can't be as bad as it was in 2019, can it? Again, 130 teams in the FBS. Maryland was the worst unit in the Big Ten by most measurements. Also, 108th in yards against, and also number 113 in points against. They have no defensive linemen coming back with more than one sack. They're really young, and we could say that about most college football teams. They're young. They've lost players. But, no, Maryland is super, super young, which could be a good thing. They do lose their best player on defense, Antoine Brooks, to the NFL draft in the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Dem Jones moves on to Boston College. That's not a good thing. Their best uh, player, probably junior linebacker, Yinde Lee with 79 tackles last year. Um, you've got um, Aiden Ippolite, the 17th rated inside linebacker out of Hollywood, Florida. He could get some instant playing time as well. All right, let's look at the schedule. I like this scheduled game against West Virginia. This was an old, old Eastern rivalry back in the days when both were independent programs. The Terps go to Morgantown to take on West Virginia. All right, that highlights the non-conference slate. They should win the other games out of conference. Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Northwestern are the draws out of the Big Ten Western Division. The issue there is that Minnesota and Wisconsin were clearly the two best teams in 2019 in the West. Will they be this year? Well, we know they're two of the best, and that's the draw for the Terps and an improved what we would expect to be an improved Northwestern team after just a three-win 2019. Maryland is going to be an underdog in every Big Ten game, as it stands right now, unless they come out of the game gate gangbusters and then they suddenly play themselves into favored status. But right now, underdog in every Big Ten game, except, of course, against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. So what is success for Maryland football in 2020? Get to a bowl game. And basically the formula should be to win all the non-conference games. That includes a 50-50 toss-up game at Morgantown against West Virginia. Then they go 3-6 and six in the Big Ten. That means they steal two other games besides Rutgers in the Big Ten, 6-6, six and 3-6 six, and six in conference. Now, if they lose to West Virginia, then it becomes awfully difficult to get to bowl play because they're basically going to have to go 4-5 and five in the Big Ten, and that's not going to happen. Our thoughts on Maryland football, leave your record prediction down in the comments section. Any requests that you have for us and obviously any comments about college football. And we will see you next time with another team preview here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.